Episode number six, Do Not Resuscitate. I think that should be the theme of this show because this show is on life support. The audience is below 500,000 viewers. The weirdos on Twitter are attacking me for making valid criticisms. I'll show you one in particular. This guy basically did everything except for call me a racist for not liking the show. I've got screenshots. We've got a horrible fucking episode. Let's get into it before I lose my will to live anymore. Welcome to the place to be. Ah, I was a little frustrated. Batwoman, that's just a car. Somebody's watching this show. <laughs> ah, that like really annoyed me. Batwoman oh, is still doing quite well. It doesn't even look like Batwoman. Ah. <laughs> Peter, I'm really starting to question why I'm even friends with you in the first place. Young black boy is being treated with the Miracle Serum and is undergoing a test because Miracle Mary Blood cured his leukemia. So now they're going to try to inject it into an 80-year-old who has the same affliction. Because that's what you do. Take the kid's blood, synthesize it, and inject it right into old Pop Pop and try to keep him around for another couple Christmases. How the fuck do they get volunteers to sign up for these experiments? Is this some subsidiary experiment run by Mary's super secret clinic that nobody's supposed to know about but everybody knows about that is now treating cancer patients? Who the fuck is writing at this point? Is it the monkeys that lead into my show? So fucking stupid science lady injects the solution into dear old Pop Pop and he immediately starts to spit up blood, convulse, and fucking dies. So even dumber white science man comes in and tells stupid fucking science lady that the benefits outweigh the downside of losing a few ancillary lives so even dumber white science guy orders her to do it again and this time get it right she objects but he says do it because he's white and the cw means white man bad she tells him that their supply is gone so the doctor goes to see a patient who he's going to use to get exactly what he needs because he's an asshole and he's evil white science guy and this is where the fun begins Peter, I'm really starting to question why I'm even friends with you in the first place. So we see Ryan taking down two or three evil white villains, I think it was two, but her kryptonite wound is really bad, and Little Fox is concerned as he's monitoring her health over the bat computer in the bat cave because the plot needs it to happen, and Ryan has to go to the hospital, and she's joined by Angelique. Oh, you know what that means. The lesbian! <laughs> So Angelique is being a complete bitch to a doctor who's just walking past them. Hey, you! We have been waiting for a doctor for two hours. And to make matters worse, she fucking threatens him, even after he says we're coding down the hall. Which in medical speak means someone is fucking dying, Angelique, you stupid twat. Now, shut the fuck up and fuck off. So when she bullies him into agreeing to finding the attending doctor and he shows up, she tells him that the wound is from a spider bite. Ryan tells him it's from a spider bite in the work stock room. Shut the fuck up, show. She. So Dr. Rodriguez prescribes her antibiotics and again, Angelique freaks out because of course, he says basically calm down, you stupid cow. She doesn't have fucking insurance, so fuck off then. And she says she'll pay whatever it costs which Ryan tries to guilt Angelique because of the nefarious means by which she acquires her income. But Ryan is still going to take that money and pay the bills at the hospital because why the fuck wouldn't she? So... Alice is on a subway car talking to Billy Ocean and he insists he doesn't know her, but he tells her he trained Sophia's army and tried to steal Desert Rose and that's how he got exiled from the island. Alice tells him that she thinks Sophia blanked out portions of their memories that would make him recall the fact that he was giving her the old meat and two veg on Lesbian Island and Sophia didn't like that because she wanted Alice because Sophia is the lesbian! <laughs> so poor Do Gray Scott is in the car with Mary and he's listening to her babble about the lawyer being a snake because he wanted them to say that Kate's dead. And you just see this look on Dugray Scott's like he wants to jerk the wheel into a goddamn bridge embankment because he can't believe he's still on this fucking show. And they're just mad because the lawyer wants to kill off Kate. You know, the CW won't kill off a gay character. Ha! Gay! And I'm... And I'm serious, like, fucking Do Gray Scott looks like he wanted to off himself during this scene. Like, he was questioning every decision he's made in his life up to this point. Like, how fucking bad does it have to be that you're in the middle of a scene and you can tell that the actor isn't acting? They're just disgusted to be there. So Sophie calls and interrupts their Sunday cruise and tells Jacob the Napier painting is a fraud and that our escape mental patient has hijacked a fucking flatbed truck, plows right into Jacob's SUV, kidnaps Mary and Jacob and broad fucking Dale light 
and he wants to extract blood or get the fucking miracle cure from the desert rose or however that works in the continuity of this dumpster fire. I don't know. But it's even worse because the escape mental patient doesn't even attempt to disguise himself. He's still wearing his hospital garb out in the street while he's driving the stolen truck. And nobody in this dumb fuck universe questions a car accident or one of the highest profile law enforcement officials in the city getting kidnapped in broad fucking daylight. And what has he had? I want you to tell him what he has had. Our next scene sees Sophie go to harass Ryan at work. And Sophie tells Ryan that if you don't give me what I want, your girl will do eight years at Blackgate Prison because she's still dealing drugs in the form of snakebite, which is Gotham's newest flavor of the month. And Ryan knows it, and Sophie uses it against her. Sophie says she's been building a case against Angelique, and Ryan calls Sophie a... a crofy? <laughs> she calls her crofy. <laughs> Caroline dries, how do you still have a fucking job? Sophie gives Ryan a device that will track Angelique's cell phone, and Ryan says, Tech like this shouldn't exist in a free society. So? Oh, Ryan, you sweet summer child. Sophie tells her that Angelique already let Ryan take the fall for her once, and Ryan tells Sophie that she can protect Angelique from her. Shut the fuck up, you stupid twat. I don't want to hate you, but your acting in response to this writing makes it almost fucking impossible not to. So we basically have a dick measuring contest between the two black lesbians, and Sophie leaves, and Ryan acts like she's tough. Ah, Batwoman! So Jacob and Mary wake up after their SUV was smashed by the escaped white mental patient who has a spontaneous rage issue, and he directs his rage at Mary because he wants the antidote. Mary basically spills her guts about the Desert Rose, and Jacob looks at her like he has no fucking idea what she's talking about. And then, Psycho Tough Guy goes crazy. Mary tells Jacob they're in her super secret underground clinic that no one knows about but everyone knows about, especially since an escaped mental patient knew exactly where the fuck it was, where Jacob and Mary were at that exact moment, and to kidnap them and take them directly to her super secret underground clinic that nobody is supposed to know about but everybody knows about. And she tells Jacob at, during this scene that it is her clinic. And he gets pissy, of course, because Do Gray Scott doesn't want to be in this fucking show anymore. So Ryan's kryptonite wound is getting worse and worse, and of course, in walks Angelique, who's in the process of selling some snake bite over the phone. I wonder if she has Cash App. No, she actually does not have Cash App. She talks about that. And Ryan tells Angelique she's giving her a job at the holdup, which is always good to hire your drug-dealing girlfriend. And Angelique turns it down, of course, much to the chagrin of Ryan, and the lesbians have feelings until Ryan is struck by excruciating pain from the kryptonite. And then she clones the dad on Angelique's phone for Sophie when Angelique goes to the bathroom to try to get Ryan's pain pills. Sophie then gives Ryan the file on Angelique and they have lesbian feelings in the bar and blah blah blah. Basically fuck this writing. Now it's funny because later on Ryan discovers that the file she had on Angelique was a smokescreen just to get her to do what she wanted. Ah, Crofy, you shifty lesbian, you. Then the doctor calls Ryan and tells her she has radioactive material in her test results because of the kryptonite. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Mary's super secret underground clinic that nobody knows about but everybody knows about, Crazy white guy stabs Jacob because Mary can't instantly make more of the Desert Rose antidote. Jacob takes the opportunity to scold Mary for a super secret underground clinic that nobody knows about, that everybody knows about, and Mary takes the opportunity to tell Jacob he's never paid attention to her because feelings. Crazy white guy has some exposition speech and tells Mary and Jacob he has brain cancer and he stabs Jacob again or punches him, whatever, and then she just spills the beans about the island of Coriana, which is aka Lesbian Island. Billy Ocean and Alice are still having feelings on the train and they talk about the island, you know, lesbian island and the desert rose and she touches his hand, they have a shared flashback and Rachel Scarston chews the scenery and looks hot like usual. So we see an exterior shot of Wayne Enterprises and go down to the back cave where we see Ryan doing some research on kryptonite when Little Fox walks in. They have some meaningless dialogue because of course this show is built around meaningless dialogue lesbians disjointed story plots more lesbians and bad writing and feelings lots of feelings ryan scolds little fox for not calling the police on alice when she showed up at sophie's 
condo the other day. Mary calls Little Fox for help and uses coded language. Ryan collapses due to kryptonite poisoning and Little Fox finally sees the wound. And Ryan, of course, plays the victim and says, you keep telling me everything that I can't do. So Ocean and Alice are still having feelings on the abandoned train car, and she calls Sophia on Lesbian Island, and they have some meaningless dialogue about feelings. Kate and nothing else. Rachel Scarston, of course, is the saving grace of this show, per usual. After her phone call, Alice and Ocean have a fight on the train. Of course, she bests him, and it reminds her of when they fought on the island, and he banged her or something, I don't know. And it ends, she ends up on top of him, which, I mean, I can't say I'm going to complain if Rachel Scarston's sitting on top of me. Uh, Sophie comes in alone. Ocean gives up the map to Lesbian Island by burning the Napier painting and revealing the map hidden behind it. Um, ta-da! So meanwhile, back at the Bat Cave, Little Fox finally sees Ryan's wound, and she has to go out to help Mary and Jacob, but Little Fox doesn't want her to go because she is too hurt, too injured to go. Uh, Sophie calls, and of course, Little Fox steers her to Mary's super secret underground clinic instead of Ryan, but Ryan's gonna go anyway, which we'll find out why next. Are you fucking high? Sophie is dispatched to Mary's super secret underground clinic that nobody knows about but everybody knows about to rescue Jacob and Mary as Jacob is about to be killed by a crazy white guy. And you can see it in Do Gray Scott's face. He's like, please just fucking smash me over the head with this thing. Please just smash me over the head with this metal object. Please just do it. Just end it. I don't want to be on this fucking show. And crazy white guy's like, brr, brr, I'll do it. I'll do it. I swear I'll do it. And just then, Sophie comes in, saves the day. Oh, oh, wait, wait a second. Never mind, I must have had a fever dream because the lesbian that weighs 105 pounds didn't beat the shit out of the guy. She got lawn darted into a wall, which is basically what had happened in reality. So meanwhile, we're still waiting for our hero Ryan to show up, and crazy white guy decides to treat Mary like a Carradine and choke her out. Well... Dear old dad comes to the rescue. Here comes Do Gray Scott. He's just trying to get killed this episode. Like, seriously, Jacob is just trying to get killed. And he hits Crazy Guy a couple times, but Crazy Guy counters with this. So after Toxic White Male knocks out Do Gray Scott because Do Gray Scott said he was going to close down Mary's clinic, Batwoman comes in. Oh, shit. Batwoman comes in. Well, we got to do it. Peter, I'm really starting to question why I'm even friends with you in the first place. So after escape mental patient Toxic White Male is defeated by Batwoman, then Sophie walks back in, but she's not alone as Batwoman soon finds out. No, she's of course followed by three more Toxic White Males and they have her at gunpoint. They want the map. Batwoman suit is bulletproof and why, why am I trying to fucking rationalize this? We've seen her fight off many 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 assailants with guns but that's only when the plot needs it to happen and the plot doesn't need it to happen right now and oh yeah the toxic white male villain with the big handgun is the doctor evil white science asshole from the beginning of the episode who told science lady to do whatever she had to do to come up with the cure because he wants money and he's evil science guy <laughs> You serious? Shoot over to Crow's headquarters where Sophie is sitting down at her surveillance equipment station and she's getting ready to listen to some. Yeah, Caesar! The lesbian! <laughs> so basically, the gist of this entire conversation is Angelique comes over to Ryan's apartment over top the, uh, the booby trap or the holdup or I don't know what the bar is called. And Angelique and Ryan are having this conversation. Lesbian one calls lesbian two out for turning her into the crows. Sophie's listening the whole time, as I said before, and we have lesbian feelings and tears out of Ryan because, of course, she's the victim here because why wouldn't she fucking be the victim here, right? Ryan is always the victim. She's never to blame for anything. Her decisions that she makes, none of it is her fault. She's a victim. Systemic racism. Sophie feels guilty for listening to lesbian feelings because the lesbians are arguing or remind her of when her and Kate used to have lesbian arguments. Ah, Batwoman! So our last scene of the show sees Alice on the train car still with Ocean seemingly laying on the seat. And she goes down and of course plunges her dagger and knife right into his chest, killing him. 
But wait, there's more. What a shock and twist. Because Alice calls Sophia and says, I killed Ocean. Uh, and Sophia's like, come back to Lesbian Island. Bring me his body. Uh, I'll turn you back to this side. We know you don't like the D, Alice. And she's like, yes, I do. Because then Ocean comes walking in. And we know Alice loves the D. And she hasn't killed him. And she's really not a lesbian. And that's where this episode ends mercifully. Oh, fuck. Peter, I really start to question why I'm even friends with you in the first place. Like, seriously, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with these people that write this show. I have no idea what is wrong with them, but god damn was that episode bad. I mean, this shit show has just gotten worse. And oh yeah, let me point out this fucking moron on Twitter who thought it would be funny to try to talk shit to me as someone who's seen every fucking... I told him, I said, bro, I've seen every fucking episode of this show. You're going to have to really work hard to try to get over on me in this in this little debate we're having right now. And of course, well, you know what? Let me just show you the tweets and then we'll take this thing home. I didn't want to do this video that long, but I'm going to show you these tweets because this shit is funny. I'm going to read you a few responses from this. You can pause it and go through it if you'd like, but... This Morris guy says to me, You hate reviewing this show. If it's so bad, just stop. A lot of people I see complaining Kate is gone as if Ruby was so great. I didn't finish the last season because of the dumb family storyline. Replacement seems like fresh air. COVID times. Viewership is down across the board. You're blaming COVID, which sticks people inside, for the viewership being down on a show that's horribly written. Here's another genius level observation from our captain of the mental gymnastics team. COVID made people find other things to do. I haven't watched yet because I got off rhythm from the show. It's a period. I'm not assuming about you. It shows. You hate watch it because it gets other sad people off. Like the ones who make a thousand videos about Star Wars and pre or so-called woke. And the president of Fucktardia struck back with one more. I say pre Larson because strong women in diversity piss you off. Ray Skywalker, heart emoji laughing face. And then he posts a Brie Larson gif. Like, this guy probably lives alone. Had his ribs removed to suck his own dick, I'm sure. <laughs> Gay! And I just, you know, you can see my response right there. This is how you deal with it. You're not really supposed to engage fucking idiots like this, but I just wanted to make an example of this douchebag, which I did. Yeah, so that's my review of Batwoman Season 2, Episode 6. Do not resuscitate. Like I said, we're not going to resuscitate this show. It's on life support. It's garbage. They renewed it for another season. I'm going to keep reviewing it because you guys want me to and you guys watch the videos and i'm here for you guys so with that being said do all the youtube things leave your thoughts in the comments below i'm e temple queen of the place to be reviews i've been here with all the yous and remember if i don't see you have a great day a pleasant tomorrow and i'll catch you on the next one legend of zelda rules happy anniversary zelda